ever hear tell of the fool killer? What's that? Fool kills a great giant. With a... With a chopper. And if you're foolish, comes and chops you. Chops you for a fool. Hi, I'm Luke Boserman, the blogger behind the Weekly Holler. I first heard about the fool killer from my friend, the talented storyteller, Gary Carden. If you've heard of the fool killer, it's probably from the 1965 film about a 12 year old boy who runs away from home and finds himself roaming the post-Civil War South with a philosophical axe murderer. The movie was inspired by a novel written by Helen Eustace in 1954. Her story was inspired by two earlier stories. Johnny Pie and the Fool Killer by Stephen Vincent Benet and the Fool Killer by William Sidney Porter who published it under his pen name, O. Henry. According to Porter, his version of the story was based on an old Southern myth like Santa Claus and Jack Frost and general prosperity and all those concrete conceptions that are supposed to represent an idea that nature has failed to embody. This piqued my interest, so I started to dig around in old newspaper archives and found some interviews with none other than the Fool Killer. Take a look at this one from 1877. I kept digging until I found the origins of the Fool Killer legend. It turns out that he's the creation of Charles Napoleon Bonaparte Evans, a North Carolina journalist in the mid-19th century. Evans was the editor of the Milton Chronicle from 1841 to 1883. He invented the fool killer as a way to express sarcasm about national events and societal ills. The fool killer was supposedly a man named Jesse Holmes, who wrote letters to the Chronicle newspaper telling of his travels and the fools that he dispatched along the way. Fool killer stories were published about once a month, and the columns were accompanied by an illustration of the fool killer carrying a club, which he used to bash various kinds of fools he came across. Here's a sampling of the fools Jesse claimed to have killed. In March 1859, the fool killer said he was approached by a man who'd been the victim of a theft. Mr. Holmes, the man said, someone fooled me out of a mighty fine turkey last night, and I'd be amazing glad to find out who did it. Describe your bird, said I. He did so, and just as I began to bob around, I heard a mighty noise like the tramping of many horses' feet. Looking around, I descried a group of fair performers on parade. The chaps were all disguised, and one of the larks was decked off in the identical feathers of the stolen turkey. Collaring the chap, says I, youngster, You'll pass mighty well for an owl without the feathers to help you out. And then I proceeded to maul the feathers off him. In another story, the fool killer takes on a materialistic young man. Going to Raleigh, I encountered a chap en route who seems to have heard enough about me to know me at sight. And taking me to one side, he said that he supposed I knew everything. And as he was courting a girl who had a wealthy aunt, and who, report said, intended on giving all of her property when she, the aunt, died. He would like to know of me if he could rely on the report as being true. Why do you wish to know, I inquired. Because, he replied, if it is true, I'll marry that girl before Saturday night as her old aunt can't live very long. And if it's not true, I don't want her as her daddy has but little plunder. See here, old fell, said I, are you flying around that girl and pretending to be in love with her? I am, was the reply. And are you making plunder the consideration of your marriage? Perceiving me to warm up and glance my eye at my faithful club, he lifted his hat and began to scratch his head as if embarrassed for a reply. When I walked up to him and putting my hand on his collar, I told him that I was about the last man he had any business with, that he would probably fare better to thrust his head in the angry lion's mouth or tilt his pate against forked lightning that he was my property and mine alone. You are, said I, pretending to be monstrously in love with a young lady, but it seems that you love her aunt's property more. And thereupon I pitched into him with the savageness of skinning skunks and mauled him about right. 
people who neglected fire safety also had to fear Jesse Holmes. I concluded to return to Carolina by the Richmond and Danville Railroad and en route slathered more subjects than Samson slew Philistines with the jawbone of a John Donkey. Near Vernon Hill I heard a mighty fuss in the night and repairing there I met a parcel of women running as if for their lives and screaming at every jump. A wheelwright chap, it appeared, had made a paper balloon and a crowd had assembled to see him send it up. But in his efforts the balloon got burnt up and the balloonist came near to burning up with it. I made the lark sing that good old religious tune, Farewell Vain World. The Fool Killer also didn't take too kindly to those who mistreated animals, drunkards, and people who handed out poor medical advice. Hearing of a man near New Hope Church in Caswell who was feeding his horse on sugar to fatten it up, I spat in my hand and went for him. When I got there, his brother, who had borrowed the beast, and which it seems had run away with his wagon and smashed it, arrived with the sugar-fed animal, and delivering him to his brother remarked, here, take your dang horse. You had no business giving him that sugar. I collared the sugar man and made him dance to the tune of Sugar in the Gourd. Later, at a revival meeting, the fool killer said, I descried a tall, red-nosed, bench-legged chap rise up and wildly waving his hands about his head, he spanked them together and cavorted around considerably. The red nose of the man and the bloodshot eye excited my suspicions and leading him aside, I asked where he got his liquor. But the sinner protested that he hadn't touched a drop, whereupon a gentle tap of my club made him disgorge a full quart of branch whiskey. I then played into his bread basket in the old fashioned style and made him show me a gallon jug he had hid under a log in the woods. Near Milton, I made a clever old farmer jump the bushes for telling a young man how to take the warts off his hands the advice being to cut one more notch on the north side of a persimmon tree than he had warts. In 1861, after the outbreak of the Civil War, the Fool Killer penned an indictment of the nation's politicians. Editor, when the historian comes to record the cause of the downfall of this once proud and mighty republic, tell him for me to put in these words to wit, it fell in the hands of fools. I tried my best to avert the dire calamity. I wielded my club by day and by night. I bathed it in the blood of demagogues, designing politicians, fanatics, rapscallions, and scoundrels. I cried aloud and spared not, but all to little effect. I called loudly for help to demolish the fools that seemed to be everywhere springing up like the green grass of this mother earth on which you and I tread. But alas, alas! Too few heard my warning and came to the rescue. Charles Napoleon Bonaparte Evans died in 1883, but the character of the fool killer was so popular that other newspapers continued having interviews with him, cementing his place in the folklore of the United States. I hope you enjoyed this story. For more like it, sign up for our email newsletter at theweeklyholler.com. You can also find The Weekly Holler on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for watching.